Welcome to Seed to Life. I hope you are keeping safe and enjoying the winter. The tasty and nutritious spinach is one of the most famous or possibly the most famous leafy green vegetables. It goes in smoothies, stir fries, salads, soups, savory dishes, bread, pasta, curries, almost in everything. Also, it is one of the easiest vegetables to grow. Towards the end of the video, we will also see the nutritional benefits, why spinach can be a dangerous food and possible remedies for that. So let's begin. The botanical name of spinach is Spinacea oleracea. It is an annual or biennial plant. That means it lasts for a year or sometimes it stays for a couple of years. Different countries use variations of the name spinach, but in India and its neighboring countries, it is also known by the name Palak. It is actually an ancient vegetable that originated in Persia and from there it was introduced to India and China. It was brought to the western world from Spain. Some archaeologists dug out ancient fossils of spinach seeds in France which indicates that it was present in 12th century in France. Isn't it amazing? Now let's see what varieties we can grow. There are different varieties of spinach but they are mainly classified based on the texture of the leaves namely curly and smooth. The curly varieties are slow growing varieties and the smooth ones are fast growing. The curly spinach is also called as Savoy and it is better tasting than the smooth ones. And that is the reason why they are commonly grown by home gardeners. Again, depending on the bolt resistance, that means not producing seeds easily as soon as the temperature rises, there are different varieties. Traditionally, the seeds of the slow bolting varieties were prickly, like the ones I have. But due to the advances in agricultural research, now the round seeded slow bolting varieties are also being developed by the researchers. The variety that I have is probably Bloomsdale long standing spinach. The leaves of this spinach are not overly curly, but they are bolt resistant. One of my friend gave me these seeds and I grew them for a couple of years and then last year I saved some seeds from my plants. Seed to harvest time changes depending on the variety and the stage at which you would like to harvest. But in general, baby spinach leaves they get ready in about 30 to 38 days. Whereas fast growing varieties uh, get like Bloomsdale, they get ready in about 40 to 50 days. And the slow growing varieties like Savoy and the other varieties with the crinkly leaves, they take up to 50 to 70 days for the harvest. Now let's see when to start these plants. Spinach is a cold weather crop, so the best time to start the spinach seeds is in fall or late winter, so that you can enjoy it in fall through spring. I am fortunate that I enjoy the warmth of the sun most of the year, but spinach doesn't do well in high temperature. So I start the seeds at least 2-3 to three weeks ahead of having an optimal temperature. And what is the optimal temperature for spinach? Spinach grows best at temperatures 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but it can sustain the lower temperatures up to 18 degrees Fahrenheit and is frost tolerant. I started seeds in the second week of October, but if fall starts early in your growing zone, then you can plan ahead and start the seeds 2-3 to three weeks before the desired temperature for outdoor growing. From my personal experience, I have observed that it is better to have well established seedlings ready to go outdoors in their final location before the winter starts. Even though spinach tolerates cold and the seeds germinate at temperatures as low as 32 degrees Fahrenheit, they grow slower in their initial period if the temperature goes very low. If you are experiencing a severe frost and extremely low temperatures currently, that may go to minus 13 degrees Fahrenheit in the next week. I wonder if my plants will handle that kind of extreme. I will update you on how they do in this extreme cold. Spinach prefers slightly acidic soil with pH between 6.5 to 7 and that is rich with organic matter. To the soil mix, you can add any good quality organic fertilizer designed specifically for leafy vegetables. Such fertilizers are well balanced with phosphorus and potassium in higher concentration than nitrogen. 
If you prefer making your own fertilizer, then you can add mixture of blur meal, bone meal and wood ash. Here are my spinach seeds that I saved from my plants last year. And you can see they are prickly. I am going to start them in this self watering container. I started the seeds mid-October because that in Texas we get winter much later in the year than many other zones. But you can start depending on your growing zone. Remember 2-3 to three weeks before the optimal temperature. I am sowing the seeds 2 inches apart. You can space the seeds 2 inches apart to prepare seedlings uh, before planting. That way it is easier to separate the seedlings. If direct sown, seed spacing is usually 12 inches apart. The varieties that produce larger leaves can be planted 12 to 18 inches apart but if you are growing spinach for salad and need baby leaves then you can plant them closer at about 6 inches. The depth of planting seeds is about 1 fourth to half inches. The germination time for spinach is very short, just 3 to 5 days. The seedlings came up just in 2 days since my seeds were very fresh and healthy. As soon as the temperature started cooling down, I moved them to their final spot. I planted some seedlings in one of my DIY compost bean planter. I had a variety of winter vegetables ready to move in raised beds, so I just used a few of the spinach seedlings. The spinach in my compost bin grew pretty quickly and I harvest the leaves regularly. I have now moved a second batch of spinach seedlings in a raised bed, and these seedlings are tiny. As soon as the temperature gets better, the seedlings will grow faster. At this point, my only expectation from these baby plants is to come out of this bad weather safe and sound. If everything goes well, I will enjoy the harvest of fresh leaves from these plants till mid to late spring. Leaves of the spinach are medium to deep green in color and delicate. Some fast growing varieties have lighter leaves. The leaves are soft and can easily get bruised because the water content of spinach leaves is 93%. The rest is a blend of all multivitamins. Spinach is rich with vitamin A, C, K, E, B and many other minerals and microelements. In mid to late spring, the plants will bolt. Spinach, unlike many other vegetables, is a dioecious plant. That means male and female plants are separate. Rarely a single plant may produce both types of flowers. As the plant approaches bolting, the stems get longer. Pollination results in seeds that are attached directly to these strands. Now let's talk about pests on spinach. A number of pests attack spinach like leaf miners, aphids and slugs. You can plant some flowering plants next to spinach to attract bees and other beneficial insects. Beneficial insects help tremendously if you want to avoid any pesticides in your vegetable garden. Spinach can get infected by fungal infections as well. Avoiding overly moist soil helps preventing these infections. Pest activity is low during winter and that time you can enjoy a clean harvest. Coming on to the health aspect, spinach is always associated with healthy diet. If you remember the cartoon Popeye, he always used to eat canned spinach. Rich in iron, vitamin A and calcium, spinach helps to manage diseases like anemia, night blindness and weak bones and teeth. It is a good source of antioxidants and dietary fibers for patients with chronic systemic diseases like diabetes, hypertension. The folic acid and other B vitamins in spinach helps to prevent folic acid and B vitamin deficiency in pregnant ladies. Adding vitamin C rich spinach to the diet can improve oral health. There are many other benefits of spinach. Still it can cause some trouble if you eat it in excess or have some health conditions. What are those? Many people do not tolerate green leafy vegetables. They feel upset stomach. Or sometimes your doctor might tell you to cut down on leafy vegetables after seeing your blood report or if you have kidney stones. I have mentioned this in my earlier videos too, that many healthy foods like beans, green leafy vegetables, beets, cocoa and some other foods contain some anti-nutritional factors like oxalates. This chemical oxalic acid is actually water soluble. It is also produced by liver. It should ideally wash off when you wa drink water, isn't it? 
but these oxalates have a bad habit to combine with minerals in your body and form insoluble compounds. Kidneys cannot pass them off easily through urine. Also, these insoluble compounds irritate the inner lining of intestines and cause irritation, and this may lead to bleeding and ulcers in the intestines. Oxalates also produce hydrogen peroxide in some bodily processes. The hydrogen peroxide destroys some important disease-fighting cells in the body, making you weak. Finally, as it combines with the minerals like calcium, less calcium is available, and that results in calcium deficiency. So, what to do? Shouldn't we stop eating spinach altogether? Firstly, I strongly believe in the fact that anything in excess is a toxin. Just because spinach is healthy, we cannot just keep eating spinach or leafy vegetables every day. The diet should be always balanced. Even in my backyard garden, I plant a variety of edible vegetables. That way, I get a little bit of everything, nothing in excess. I can appreciate and enjoy the homegrown vegetables without wasting them. And I can also include a variety of foods in my diet. Secondly, some theories suggest that boiling spinach reduces the oxalate content to some extent. Thirdly, there is a research that suggests that consuming spinach with milk products is helpful. The theory is milk products contain calcium. Consuming additional calcium helps to reduce calcium deficiency because there is enough calcium to bond with the oxalic acid. And this could be the reason why several spinach dishes are prepared with cheese and paneer that is cottage cheese. Overall, in my opinion, the first solution is the best to have some moderation while eating any food. I hope you liked this video and found it useful. A big thanks to you for watching my videos and supporting my channel Seed to Life. Please click subscribe for more such videos and updates. Click the bell icon to get notified about future videos. And feel free to reach out to me through comments, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. If you have any questions, I am posting the links in the description. I would love to hear your suggestions and would like to know the news of your garden. Happy gardening. Thank you again. See you soon.